Hi guys, this is Max from High on Android.com, where we get on Android every day. Anyway, it's that time of the week, Daily Driver. For this week, we're going to do a special edition of the best and worst Android smartphones of 2016. Let's go do this, baby. Now, I'm not including every smartphone that came out this year for the top best and worst. I'm only gonna evaluate flagships. All right, flagship is a phone that is very popular, used by a lot of people. So I consider phones like Galaxy S7, OnePlus 3T, is not really a flagship, but I include it anyways, um, because it's actually an awesome phone. Uh, I got the LG V20, LG G5, uh, the Pixel, and also the S7 Edge and the S7. Uh, I would consider these all flagship phones, right? So which one do I absolutely love the most this year uh, that deserves top smartphone of the year? If the Note 7 wasn't blown up, I would totally go with the Note 7, uh, but I'm gonna go have to go with the S7 Edge. All right, first thing I really like about this phone is that uh, it's a 5.5 inch. It's sort of not too big, and it's sort of not too small. If you like smaller phones, um, you may still be okay with the 5.5 inch. If you like bigger phones like the Note series, this still may be big enough for you to use. Also, the display is probably the best on the market, the brightest AMOLED with a 1440p display. IP68 waterproof rating. The curved edges are definitely nice. I wouldn't say they're super useful. I find myself actually not using it that much, but there are very useful features. And also battery life is very good. This is probably the best battery life this year. Gets over 10 hours in our battery SOT test. And camera is one of the best. Now, if you're looking for the best camera, I would actually say it's actually the Google Pixel. This could have been the best smartphone of the year if Google added stuff like waterproofing and make it more feature packed. Not bad at all though. I love using the Google Pixel the Pixel XL, I would definitely have to give this the second place, all right? But it comes very close to the S7 Edge. Um, camera is indeed better on the Pixel, just by a tiny bit. Not too much difference between the camera here and here. I would say third place is the LG V20, all right? But if you're talking about the best big smartphone of the year, this is definitely it. This is actually the only 5.7 inch smartphone you can buy this year. I really like this. I ended up using this a lot. Also, this is actually one of my daily drivers. Uh, I usually switch between these three phones. I would say the worst phone of this year would be the LG G5. I mean, it's not that bad, but the material they use, it gets up uh, scratched up pretty easily. This here actually came uh, out of the factory when I got the phone and had it. And that is why with the LG V20, they put an aircraft material instead of this painted stuff and of course this is the first flagship phone with modular features but i feel like lg didn't come out with the modules they should have came out with like a projector module speaker module i think in terms of that the moto z did a lot better it's not a bad phone at all but compared to something like the lg v20 i think LG did a terrific job of improving upon some of the features missing with the LG G5. And the battery life isn't that long with the LG G5. And I think this year, as far as uh, you know, raw sales go, I don't think they actually sold that many LG G5s. I bet they'll sell a lot of LG V20s. This is an excellent phone. I really like the LG V20. I mean, this is still better than a lot of other phones, like budget phones out there, but I'm only looking at flagship this year. All right, let's talk about some of the most anticipated features for 2017. I would definitely say it's the year of 4K smartphones. Sony came out with the Z5 Premium, the world's first 4K phone that actually doesn't really work in 4K. All the apps are still in 1080p. Now, if you look at Android Nougat on the S7 Edge, also on the Note 7, um, you're able to change the resolution. That way people who don't want to drain the battery using the 4K resolution, they can change the resolution in one tap. And I'm hoping the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Edge uh, will have 4k screens that's the next step and especially if you want to make the gear vr better virtual reality we still need as many megapixels as possible because you're really looking through a magnifying glass so i'm really looking forward to a 4k screen there's also artificial intelligence that just came out with huawei magic i'm not so keen about that because it's the first version i would wait till next year if huawei actually succeeds with artificial intelligence this year 
they will have a second version next year. A lot of new technology gets announced, but either they never pick up or by next year, it's completely gone. So in terms of that, the LG G5 had a good modular idea. I just feel like it wasn't implemented well because you got to slide it in, slide it out versus Moto Z. It's magnetic. You slap it on, slap it off. What else to walk, walk up? Or? I am looking for a better camera, uh, bigger sensors on camera. Obviously, camera has to get better every year. It has. I'm looking for f1.4 aperture camera this year with hopefully bigger sensor size. Now the Pixel and last year's Nexus 6P still have the biggest camera sensor size. So I wish manufacturers would go another level, another step and add a bigger sensor. I know physically it's hard to do, but with a bigger sensor, it's going to have better low light performance. Of course, with f1.4 aperture, you're going to be able to also take way better videos in low light. Those are the things I'm looking for. Of course, there's like fingerprint sensor. It's been now a few years that we've been using fingerprint sensor. I really feel like the back sensor is the way to go. I know Samsung is working on some screen uh, fingerprint sensor technology. I would really love to be able to use the whole screen no matter where I put my thumb, the fingerprint sensor works. So that's another area we could improve upon. Of course, the Note 7 had iris scanner. Uh, I find that pretty helpful, uh, but at the same time, you actually have to swipe your phone and then it would scan your iris. So if maybe somebody can come up with a way to do it, so it will constantly scan for your eye without draining the battery. Oh, well, that's gonna be really awesome. So long as you have your phone in front of you, it will unlock by itself almost like magic instead of having to press buttons and then doing the second step. So a lot of excitement to watch out for. Now, if you look at each of these phones though, there's one thing good about each phone. For example, the LG G5 has two cameras on the back, one wide angle, which is very useful. All right, the Galaxy S7, very long battery life, very high quality display, 1440p on a smaller device. Uh, one plus 3t this is the fastest smartphone in the world lg v20 it also has two cameras on the back this one has very good battery life and also it's removable pixel has probably the best camera on the market this year the s7 edge does a lot of things well and is also fully waterproof so i will do this video again next year but it's going to be very interesting what lg samsung huawei uh, show me htc all of these company develop google so it will definitely be an interesting year anyway i'm about to go to new york in a few hours i'll try to make a christmas video um, so check that out too anyway hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video have a great day follow me on twitter facebook google plus instagram periscope and as always stay <laughs> Here to subscribe.